Breaking news coming in a powerful explosion was reported near Chernihiv last night as the Russian military continues to intensify its offensive attacks against Ukraine on the 10th day of invasion. Shocking visuals from the Ukrainian city of Chernihiv show a massive explosion lightening up the entire sky. Visuals on your screens at the moment. Yevhenia uh, Kravchuk, Ukrainian MP from the ruling party. She's also close to Zelensky, now joins us on this particular broadcast. Day 10 of the invasion. Appreciate you joining us on this particular broadcast. And we are also reporting the powerful explosion on Chernihiv on Friday. What is your sense at the moment? Um, thank you for uh, for calling me and uh, thank you for um, uh, giving information what's going on with the war in Ukraine. Um, it's um, um, uh, past uh, nine days uh, and um, it's uh, it's clear that um, Russians thought that operation this war would go differently and they will be in Kiev by now. Uh, the capital of Kiev is totally controlled uh, by Ukrainian government and by the army. Uh, Russian troops are trying to reach Kyiv from different sites, but all of the attacks are uh, being um, uh, beaten by Ukrainian army and uh, Russians have heavy losses. Now the official number of losses of Russian troops is more than 10,000 people dead. Uh, and um, uh, also um, a lot of are uh, taken as, capture, as captives. We feel that uh, Russians will um, a bit change uh, what they uh, plan to do and do more bombing and more shelling. Uh, that's what they did with Kharkiv and still doing. Yes. There's no uh, green corridors and no ceasefire in Kharkiv, in Chernihiv, in Sumy, in many other cities. The only green corridor uh, that uh, Russians agreed to uh, are in Donetsk region in two cities and it will start in 30 minutes. It will uh, be accompanied by the Red Cross. Uh, yeah. Because we feel that uh, Russians can bomb uh, the uh, the Green Corridor as well, so uh, we need guarantees of um, from international organizations such as Red Cross uh, to take people and to, uh, um, to to go with people to. Oh, no, uh, absolutely, and we hope that hap happens, and we hope that there is a safe passage for people because we're seeing relentless visuals of all the destruction on our screens. It is for the world to see the kind of destruction Ukraine is facing right now. And we're playing those visuals out as well. My question here, uh, Yevhenia, uh, and I hope I got your name correct, is whether, whether today uh, Ukraine feels a sense of betrayal coming in from the West. Has there been a lot of misplaced trust in the West, especially America? Well, uh, we feel that there is no time to be neutral. Uh, I think that India cannot be neutral as well, uh, because at least we get um, some military aid and some humanitarian aid from uh, from the West. Of course, we feel that uh, it's not enough because we need a no-fly zone. What is no-fly zone is closing the sky um, uh, from bombs and shelling of uh, schools, of hospitals, of uh, places where civilians live, because it's uh, hundreds of people people, civilians that died in this uh, absurd war um, that, that uh, was conducted and um, started by uh, one person from uh, from uh, Russia, the, the pre uh, president of Russia. So there is no time to be neutral. We uh, urge India also to help Ukraine uh, to send weapons, to, to send humanitarian aid at least. Uh, about the West, uh, yes, we feel that NATO uh, should um, 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 imply the no flight zone and give us uh, jets, the battle jets to uh, save our skies. Uh, because from the sky, you know, Russians so, so are take this, take this people, perspective, Yevhenia. Uh, there is a perspective coming in from Jen Saltenberg, who's a NATO general secretary, as you already know. He says that implementing a no fly zone would probably imply that a lot of uh, NATO planes would have to shoot down the Russian ones, and that could further create further escalation in that interaction entire region which they are trying to avoid and this is their stance and how do you respond to that stance? 
there is already this escalation. Uh, Russians are seizing uh, atomic station. One of the stations that are under control of Russia is in Zaporizhia region. It's mm. six times bigger than Chernobyl. Uh, if um, we lose control and if there can be a catastrophe on this uh, atomic station, uh, it will be six times worse than Chernobyl. It will affect the whole region. The Third World War already started. Russia is fighting the whole world, but only Ukraine is fighting back from the whole world. Uh, well, you know, when you, uh, I'm coming back to the point of no-fly zone. What is your expectation as far, the, far as the no-fly zone is concerned? Because the minute you put that in, this would essentially mean that the NATO military might would have to come in, the planes would have to shoot down the Russian ones as well. And when uh, Jen Saltenberg makes this particular statement, he says that in light of a larger narrative where this could really escalate out of control and spiral out of control while at it. I'm sorry, it is already out of control. When I see children that are dying, uh, when I see women that are dying, it's not about uh, military operation. It is already out of control. We are in the center of Europe. All the blood of these uh, women and children uh, could be avoided. And this, you think, uh, this particular stance of the NATO somewhere, uh, as your president also says, is now a green light given to Russia for further bombing? Yes, it, it looks like a green light, but we think that at least at minimum we need a no-flying zone over the green corridors and over infrastructure objects and also the uh, fire jets. Uh, so we could uh, defend uh, as well our sky. And uh, uh, the, the matter is that uh, the people in these countries, in NATO countries, uh, in many countries, uh, they uh, think that no-fly zone should be uh, imposed. For example, there is sociology that 74% uh, of Americans, they agree that no-fly zone is absolutely essential. So I think that people... Uh, in those countries should also put some pressure on their government to do it and to have the courage uh, to save um, um, the people of Ukraine. And you know, uh, Yevhenia, nothing really justifies the cost of human lives. Nothing justifies war. Nothing justifies violence. Uh, at this point of time, what is your expectation from the rest of the world? The diplomatic stance, the political stance has been taken. Would you now rather see the European Union nations, some of which are even NATO members, impose further economic sanctions on Russia? Is that what you are banking on? What is it exactly that you all are banking on at the moment? We think that uh, full embargo on whatever Russia sells should be imposed, especially for gas, for coal. Uh, it's uh, essential because that's where, from what they are getting money that are spent uh, for the bombing, for uh, for those tanks to go into the peaceful country uh, and to kill peaceful people, ban uh, Russian uh, oil, uh, gas, and don't buy it. It's bloody money. And now what is uh, uh, the plan of action as far as your ruling party is concerned? You are close to Zelensky. I'm sure you're in touch with President Zelensky as well. It's been a tough time. There are rumors uh, making rounds that he's probably fled to Poland as well. If you could just uh, 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 clarify that on our network for us. It's a big disinformation campaign which is coming from Russia. President Zelensky is in Kiev, is in Ukraine, and uh, he sent his uh, last video from his cabinet, uh, cabinet in uh, in Kiev. He will not leave Kiev. He will not leave the country. He became a symbol uh, of courage for the whole world, and he will stay so. No, absolutely. Um, what is the plan of action now? Because clearly uh, you're, you are not getting the support that you required from the European unions, especially the nations who are a part of NATO, the American led NATO as well, from America as you were expected. Uh, and hence, somewhere you feel a little bit sidelined vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. And what is Zelensky's plan of action uh, uh, going forward? 
we plan to fight. We will not give up. And we get uh, armory weapons uh, every day. Uh, and also some of uh, people for, like soldiers from different countries who are volunteering, not from the country, but volunteering. Uh, and we have um, these uh, uh, units uh, formed uh, from, uh, from soldiers from other countries who just came uh, to help, not as, um, you know, representing a state, but, but uh, representing themselves. So we'll continue to fight. Our troops are uh, um, um, keep bombing the Russian tanks as well. Mm. Uh, so we are not uh, giving up, but we expect the whole world not to close the eyes what's going on in Ukraine and to uh, uh, imply the no-fly zone uh, to uh, follow up with uh, economic sanctions and to give also humanitarian aid. And also to. And I was just um, about to tell um, you that before we let refugees. you go, what is the kind exactly the kind of humanitarian aid, shelter, or what is it exactly that you would like to appeal to the world today through our medium uh, that Ukraine really requires at this point of time? Uh, please uh, find me in Twitter um, uh, with my last name. It's Sean Kravchuk, uh, Kravchuk Yevhenia, and write me if you can help with humanitarian aid, which is medicine, uh, uh, which is um, um, products for refugees uh, in uh, in the country, uh, and and um, also if you can help with helmets, with uh, um, with ammunition. Also, please write. We have a headquarters uh, which are uh, coordinated by our. Vice Prime Minister Olga Stefanishina and uh, each help could be used. Well, we hope uh, that all of you remain safe and there are no more loss of human lives. We can only say this at this point of time and your message is going out to millions who are watching you at the moment. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate you taking the time out joining us. Please stay, stay safe.